Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the first video of section 2. This is the 8th lesson in this series on making an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this remaster series, we will be working on our game time for this section and our UMG widgets. We will be making significant updates from the previous version of this course, and I'll go over what those are as we do them. In this video, we'll be setting up our game time library. This video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors, and you too can support this channel, and all you have to do is hit that like button below. Truly, it does help this channel out, and it means that other people are more likely to see this. So if you want to help out the community in general, you know what to do. And if you want to take your support just a bit further, all you have to do is hit the subscribe and notify icon. And finally, if you want to go even a bit further and you have a bit of extra money left over at the end of the month, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. At upper tiers, Patreon sponsors get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects. And at other tiers, Patreon sponsors sponsors get access once a project has been completed on YouTube. Okay, open up your project and let's make a start. Alrighty, so here we are back inside of the editor and we are going to be working on our game time library which is just going to be three functions that we're going to use in multiple areas. So let's go to our core and in our core, let's create a new folder called library. And in library, let's right click and go to blueprint and we are going to look for blueprint function library. So go ahead and click that. This will be BP game time library. All right, let's pop this open. And in here, we have our first function, which is it wants us to name. And we're gonna name this calculate game time. All right, I'm just gonna save it real quick so I know it's there. And this is going to be a pure function. It will be public, of course, cause well, we're in a library and it should be. And we are gonna add in three inputs of all type floats. I'm just gonna do one real quick called in delta time. And again, I'm putting the in at the start just because of the zoom in thing, but the in just means what I'm passing in. It doesn't mean anything else. All right, now that I said that's the float, I'm going to add two more and they will be in game speed and in game time. Okay. So this is the core function that will calculate our game time for us. We will use this to actually set our date, our time and everything else, but this is what's going to be calculating it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our delta time and our game speed, and we're going to use these two values to determine how much we want to update our game time. So game time is what time is it in the game? So our game is going to run on a 24 hour clock using a earth calendar. You know, where are we at in this? And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to divide delta time, which remember happens on every tick, and we are going to divide it by our game speed. So this is how we are controlling the flow of time in our game. We're going to take this result and we're going to add it to whatever our current game time is. There we go. I'm just gonna put a reroute in so it lines up a bit neater. Now what we do with this is then we divide this. So we're going to do a division and we want a whole and remainder. It doesn't really matter if you're using a 64 bit integer or a 32 bit. I'm just going to use the standard one just because it's doesn't really matter for what we're doing. I'm just gonna line those up a bit better. All right, now for our divisor, I'm just gonna use 24 because this is gonna represent a 24 hour clock. We're gonna then take this information and we're gonna pass it out to our return node. And we want both the remainder and the return value. Our remainder is the actual time and our return value is our day counter, which will fluctuate between zero and one. So we're gonna have out, game time. So we're actually passing out our game time. So we get some in, we update it, we divide it, we pass out that new value. That new value comes back in here on that game time. And then we're going to pass out our return value, which is our day counter. All right. So that's the first of our three functions done. Our next two are just kind of tedious. Our next one will be our set speed setting. Okay, so this is going to be used by anything that needs to get what our current speed setting is. And we're going to have six and these will range between zero and five where three is our default. So what we need to do is we need to get our game speed. So I'm just going to create a new input variable and this will be called 
gain speed. And because we're not updating it, I'm not gonna worry about the in versus out. We're updating something else. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value and I am going to divide it. Now, what I divide it by is going to be our default gain speed. Now, this I'm going to just promote to a variable. This one's a little bit easier on me and this will be default game speed local and our default game speed local will set to a value of 60. Remember that number is going to come up a few times. All right. So now that we've divided our game speed by our default game speed, what we're actually getting is our proportional speed. So I'm going to promote that to a local variable. I'm going to call this proportional. Sorry, I actually can't see what I'm typing. The microphone is directly over the variable list. So if there are typos in that, I apologize. So that's proportional speed local. All right, that way we know what our game speed should be and what we're actually doing with it. So from there, we're going to create our lovely chain of branches. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to take this proportional game speed local and we are going to check, is it equal to zero? So are we paused in other words? And if we are, then we're going to have a third local variable called, called speed setting local and it will be of type integer. All right, now the default for this will be zero. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna set that on the true and we're gonna set it to zero. Zero represents our pause. All right, so I'm just gonna move these to the right a bit and I'm gonna do this likewise with our conditional check just so it lines up. And I'm gonna take these two and I'm going to duplicate them down here, plug that into the false. So this new branch, what we're gonna do on the true is set it to our slowest non-paused speed setting, which will be a value of one. And we're gonna take our proportional speed local and we are gonna do nearly equal and we want float. And again, I'm gonna have a high tolerance of 0.1 and my B value, what I want it to be nearly equal to the proportion is 1.75. All right. So if our value is near 0.175, then we are at our slowest non-paused setting. All right, I'm gonna take all these nodes now and duplicate them again down here. I'm gonna plug that into the false, and this will be, of course, a value of two. The proportional setting for this one will be 1.25. Now, this is our second slowest speed. As these values, as the B value, as the proportion gets greater than one, we are slowing down. As the proportion gets less than one, we are speeding up. So think, I guess, what we're gonna do down here when we duplicate this. If that's 1.25 and we're going to have six total and three is our default, take a guess what the number here is going to be. So first, just set this to three. Give yourself a moment to think. Remember, three is our default. So if three is our default, then what do we want B here to be? Well, B is going to be one. I'm not sure why that did not work. All right. So after that, we are gonna have another one of these. So we'll duplicate that down here plug that into there and now we're going a faster than our default speed and in this case we're going to check are we at 0.5 if we are at 0.5 then our speed will be our setting of four and then we'll have our fastest speed which will be a value of five on our speed setting local and what we're looking for is is the proportion 0.25 and then just to make life a little bit better in case something goes wrong and we go through all the falses and end up down here we're going to default the speed setting to three regardless so this is more of a catch-all check at the very end of this last false let's go back to the top here and we're going to do a return node on this return we are going to pass out our speed setting so I'm gonna get our speed setting and I'm just gonna plug that into there. And let me just rename this to speed setting. We don't need the local. And everything is just going to plug into that return. All right, that is, after we're done plugging these in, that is, that is the end of this function. And we have one more library function to do. And that library function will be our set speed multiplier. So let's go ahead and create that. And that is set speed multiplier. Again, sorry for any typos. Seriously, the microphone is covering that side of the screen. All right, so we need an integer as our input, and that's gonna be called our current. Also, I made a mistake, I just realized, current speed setting. This is going to be integers, I said, really quickly. All three of these should be pure, so mark that as pure. Go back to our second function here and make sure to mark that as pure. Sorry, I didn't click over here because I can't see anything on that side, and I'm pretty sure I marked that as pure already. 
All right, so all three of these should be here. All right, what we're going to do is we are going to set a multiplier value, which will be a float. And that's actually very similar to the value that we're actually looking for here. All right, and to do that, we're gonna do a switch on int. And we need a total of six pins, so zero through five, including our default. We'll leave the default in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new local variable called speed multiplier local. It will be of type float, and I'm just gonna compile. It will have no default setting, and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and select that there. And off of our zero, our multiplier will be zero. If you wanna go ahead and skip ahead, as I said, these are what we're looking at. We're literally just setting these numbers. So if I duplicate this down here, our first one should be 1.75. So 1.75, and again, you can check that here, 1.75, that should be 1.25, 1, etc. So let's duplicate both of these, and let's just set these, so it's 1.25. You can really use any numbers you want, so long as your middle value, so whatever goes into three, if you're using a total of five game feeds and a pause, so six total, that middle value should always be one. The lower values, so the slower it's going, that middle value should always be one. The slower the game is going, the closer to pause it is, the larger the multiplier should be until you're at paused, in which case it's zero. The faster you're going, the smaller the value should be. So for our four, well, that's gonna be 0 0.25, sorry, 0 0.5, not 0.25. And for our five, it is 0.25. Again, you can check these numbers here. 0 0.5, 0 0.25. And then for our default, what we'll do is we will just have a duplicate of this one. Yes, we could plug directly into the same node. I just like having that on a separate pin. Don't know why. And then we'll do our return. So this is a bit different than what we did in the original series. From this return, or from the speed multiplier, we're going to plug that into the return. So in the original series, anytime we needed this information, we calculated it over and over again using this calculate game time. Now we're going to use these two functions, the speed setting and speed multiplier, to get the information we need from say the UMG widget to the uh, game state. We're gonna use the same system to control for our building construction and our unit movement. It just streamlines it a bit and makes it easier to work with. I realize we don't have anything that we can show off at the end of this video, I'm sorry about that, but the next video is gonna be fairly long anyway, and we needed these in place so we can get started with what we're doing in the next video. Okay, that said, I hope you've enjoyed creating your game time library. Again, sorry we can't see much with it, but hey, it is a start. And in the next video, we'll actually calculate out our current game time, set our default game time, and have a little bit of a debug that shows us where we're at in our calendar and in our day. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure to hit that like button below. And as a reminder, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters, once again, at upper tiers, get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects on YouTube. Okay, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.